Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a great day. I am here with the esteemed historian, the esteemed traveler, anthropologist, Dr. Renoko Rashidi. I am Joseph Ward, and we're here to have a brief conversation about Alexander Pushkin, Alexander Dumas, other Africans that contributed greatly to Europe, to Europe. And we're also here to promote Dr. Rashidi's upcoming webinars. And I just want to give you brief information about the webinars, and we're going to get more into the webinars a bit later. So this Friday, July 16th, from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time, is the African Image and Art from Africa to Europe to the Americas webinar. So once again, this Friday, July 16th, from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., uh, Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S., the African Image and Art from Africa to Europe to the Americas. And Monday, July 19th, from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m., U.S. Eastern Standard Time, the CDs, an African people in India, a conversation with Passion, with Passionton Obing and Dr. Renoko Rashid. So make sure you tune in once again. That's Monday, July 19th from 7.30 p.m. It's 9 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. The CDs and African people in India, a conversation with Passionton Obing and Dr. Renoko Rashid. And if people want to get information, the specifics about how to register, these are virtual presentations, Zoom presentations. Just go to my website. It's the easiest thing, www.drrenoco.com, www.drrenoco.com. And I'm hoping that if this one goes well, I'm not talking about the web stars, webinars because I know they're going to go well. But if this session goes well, I wanted us to begin a series right. of these brief conversations where we promote our work, on the shoulders of giants, our Patreon pages, our websites, and the webinars. And I can tell you, I'm going to Egypt on the 18th, I'm sorry, I'm going to Egypt on the 30th of July, I return on the 18th of August. And next month, I wanna do one on the Olmec civilization. I yes. wanna do one on Africans in ancient America. I know there's a lot of opposition to it. That just fires me up all the more. And I'm gonna talk about the Olmec and why they are important to us. So y'all get ready, the trolls yes. and the pirates. Get ready, cause I'm already ready. Yeah, hey, and I'm coming with them. All right, my brother. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So, so what about Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin? Why is it that you have this love affair with this brother just as I do? So my love affair with Pushkin started about seven years ago. What happened uh, to you? So when I first started doing these on the Shows of Giants series, now I started doing these series because it was a group of young girls here in Tallahassee who had no idea who Harriet Tubman or our other historical figures were. My so I had to do something about that. So I created on the Shows of Giants. And a mentor, Keith Turner, he, um, he, he, got, he introduced me to... J.A. Rogers, and through reading J.A. Rogers, I learned about Alexander Pushkin. And learning about how Pushkin literally contributed to this modern Russian literature. Pushkin was a great character. Pushkin was a great writer. Pushkin was a great contributor. Pushkin was an outside the box thinker. He was a rebel, and he was a man in love with his African ancestry. And as I read more about Pushkin, and saw his works and how he contributed to the society, I got angry because nobody taught us about this in school. If I learned about Pushkin in school, it would have made me want to uh, participate more. It made me want to just delve into the information a lot more. So Pushkin is a, is a man who really, I can see, inspired a lot of people, inspired a lot of writing, inspired a lot of styles of writing. Most of the modern Russian literature that we see today is inspired by Pushkin. So those are some things that really got me going on Pushkin. How about yourself? I don't know how, I, I was thinking about it earlier on. I don't know how I got connected with Pushkin. It may have been through uh, Jay Rogers, World's Great Men of Color. I think there's a section on Pushkin in there, but I know that for the last 25, 30 years, I have had a love affair with Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. I like to say his whole name, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, to the extent that in 1999, I went to Russia to celebrate what would have been his 200th birthday. 
Right. I got a lot of information on him. And the reason I think that this is particularly relevant, Pushkin and Dumas, is because the time frame that they live fits in with the webinars that I'm going to be doing, even with the um, the CDs of India. Uh -huh. So Pushkin is what we could say is the Shakespeare of Russia. Yes. And he's a very romantic character. And I think we were saying before the show began that one of the things that's appealing about Pushkin and the Dumas family is that they proclaimed and acknowledged their African ancestry. There are many sisters, I won't say many, but there are other sisters and brothers in the history of Europe, or at least they are claimed to be sisters and brothers like Beethoven, right, right. Right. Ludwig Beethoven and uh, Charlotte Sophia, but they never acknowledged their African lineage that I'm aware of. Pushkin and Dumas acknowledge it. In right. fact, right. they were both insulted about it and they must have had very lonely existences. So Pushkin is my man. I have a picture of Pushkin right next to me. I call on him all the time. And anytime I, I embark upon a new writing project, I make Pushkin my profile pic on my Facebook page. <laughs> I enjoy Pushkin's moments. It, it seems at times when Pushkin wanted what he wanted, he wasn't going to let anything stop him. And he didn't have a problem with speaking his mind, even through his pen, but he was speaking his mind. And he was exiled twice, exiled twice for for his writings. Um, the, the government was they were the government was like, what are you doing? Why are you speaking out? Because we're talking about a time where mass censorship. So you have these you have all these people in the land who are being censored. But Pushkin is knowing what the laws are, but understanding that, OK, social reform needs to happen because he was a rebel as well. So he didn't like what was going on in the land. And he used his writings to fight back against the government, even though it got him exiled a couple of times. But. He still wasn't afraid to speak his mind and he wasn't afraid to go after what he wanted, even sometimes going after other people's women. But he wasn't afraid to go after what he wanted. We better talk about that at another time, brother. <laughs> yeah. But I will say this since you brought it up. He was quite the ladies man. When I was in Russia, I was told by Russian scholars that at the time of his death in 1837, Pushkin was born to Russian nobility. Uh -huh. At the end of May, I believe, 1799. Uh -huh. And he died as a result of wounds inflicted in a duel in 1837. That at the time of his death, Pushkin was romantically involved with 36 different women. Yes. 36 different women. But <laughs> what appeals to me about Pushkin, I think, more than anything, two things. First, his utter brilliance. He was considered the most intelligent man of Russia mm -hmm. or in Russia. And, you know, his writings had a tendency to captivate the human imagination. He wrote in a manner that anybody could relate to. Right. I think right. he was a poet and he wrote prose, Captain's Daughter, The King of Spades, et cetera, et cetera. But he wrote in such a manner that anybody could relate to. And he identified with the masses of oppressed people in Russia, the serfs. Also, Pushkin identified with enslaved Africans in the Americas. He would talk about African-Americans as his enslaved brethren, his sisters and brothers. And we're talking about in the early 19th century. So what's not to like? Right. I, I was thinking about somebody in modern times to compare Pushkin to, because you're always talking about being able to link our past to our present. And I haven't really come up with a person, but I'm just thinking that if, if Pushkin was a, a modern time person, He'd be like this, this hip hop savant, but not just a hip hop savant because he had, I guess if we if we use hip hop terms, he had different styles. He had so many different styles. So he can write, he can write romantic poems. He can write the verse poems. He can write plays. He can write all, all these different, all these different forms of writing he brought to the table. And I guess you could say he had a, he had an influence. If I could just say somebody i wouldn't necessarily say specifically tupac but it was tupac s in the way he influenced people mm -hmm. because the the uh operas that came out that were written yeah. especially chavalski writing the operas based off of pushkin's writing the 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 cantatas that was based off of his writings the songs that were based off of his writings the plays that were based off of his writings he literally influenced generations and generations of Russian writers, even still down to this day. 
Um, they do the um, the centennial celebrations for for Pushkin because he was that influential in his writing and and especially the way he related, like you say, he related to the people. He he spoke in a way or he wrote in a way that the average Russian person felt like it was a connection to them. And so I'm I'm still thinking of that modern person to to compare him to. But if he was in modern times, he would be someone that that would be able to use different genres of writing and different genres of music and art to touch people. Well, let me let me ask you this. Now, you raised at the very beginning, perhaps without intending to, maybe the most fundamental point, and I want to come back to this. You mentioned that when you first started doing your show on the shoulders of giants, there were people who, now, correct me if I'm wrong, and please correct me, I would like to be corrected on that some of the people didn't even know who Harriet Tubman was. Did correct. I correct? That's correct. That's correct. Well, here's the question then, and I'm going to put this out there to you. I'm sure you've had to address it. Why should you be talking about Pushkin, a man of African heritage who lived in Russia 200 years ago, when a lot of people don't know about Harriet Tubman? How do you respond to that? What is the relevance and the priority of Pushkin in that sense? For me. <laughs> As a young black man in school, because I think about, I think back myself in school, in class, they're teaching us about William Shakespeare. They're teaching us about all these other white European writers. I'm disinterested. I'm not that, I, I really don't care about this information because I have no connection to it. So if you teach me about Pushkin, if you teach me about Dumas, people of African ancestry, people who come from, who have some of the same connections that I have. If you teach me about these people and how great and influential writers they are, it'll make me a lot more interested in learning more about them and other great black writers. Because it, it, it makes me feel a lot more powerful as a writer. Like I'm somebody, my handwriting is horrible. Same here. But, but I do have a skill of writing. So People used to tease me all the time. Chicken Scratch was one of my nicknames, <laughs> you know. So, but if I if I knew that there were a, a great number of black writers, I would have worked to improve my handwriting, or even not not <clears throat> cared about that, but just went on and continued to write because these being able to see people who look like you and have the same heritage as you, who are achieving great things as a young child and even as an adult makes me makes me know that I can makes me want to do more makes me want to see what more this world has to offer rather than just thinking I'm stuck in the box very good yes sir I'm going to talk about Pushkin a lot this Friday night in the presentation the African and art but while we have a little time let's talk about one of the I would say the other great writer the man of African heritage during this time he was essentially a contemporary of Pushkin uh -huh. And his name is Alexander Dumas Pierre. Talk yeah. about Alexander Dumas. Dumas, another another gentleman I wish I would have known. If yes. somebody would have told me the author of The Three Musketeers and The uh, Count of Monte Cristo was a black man and that the central characters were based off of a black man, yeah, I would have wanted to read it more. Dumas, <clears throat> like Dumas, to me, these gentlemen are similar. I think they had a similar impact in, within France and Russia, and Dumas even an impact in France and Russia. Um, now, I do wonder how much of an impact Pushkin had on Dumas, even though they um, they kind of missed each other by, by maybe 20, 30 years, but um, Dumas spending time in Russia um, after he was exiled out of out of France, so spending time in Russia, I wonder how much he was influenced by Pushkin. But Dumas being able to write in various styles, both Dumas and Pushkin uh, are given credit for <coughs> introducing magazine style writing as well as romantic yeah. writing. And Dumas was another romantic. <laughs> oh, Dumas was very flamboyant. Too. They were both flamboyant. Yeah, I understand Pushkin might have. Uh, might be dressed in a yellow shirt and a red scarf and some 
light colored pants with no underwear and a top hat and these long sideburns. And Dumas never let people forget that he was in the crowd. Right. Dumas, like Pushkin, ne was never allowed to forget his African heritage. And they both <clears throat> embraced it. There's a story. I lived in France. I spent a lot of time in France. Mm -hmm. And I have a good relationship with the person I consider the number one biographer of Pushkin and Hannibal, but also, in some measures, uh, Dumas. And he told me a story about Dumas once that I've never seen in a book, that uh, the great African-American actor Ira Aldridge came to France and did a performance of Othello. And Dumas was in the front row. He was in the front row. And he was so, and he was a big man, and he was so carried away that he leaped on the stage after the performance and embraced Ira Aldridge in a huge bear hug and put his fist in the air and said, "I too am a Negro." Now that was too much. I love that man. Yes, yes. He he loved who he was when yeah. he when, the more he learned because <laughs> what I one thing I love about him is the intentionality of changing his last name from De, I, and I, I know I'm going to say this wrong, but De La Pelatre or De La Pelatre, something, that was his original last name, but intentionally changing that to Dumas to honor his grandmother and his African heritage as, as he became more of a writer, which means he understood where he came from. So let's talk about that for a minute. Dumas, his lineage, the African aspect of his lineage is traced to an African woman in Haiti. Right. And there's so much going on in Haiti, we should be talking about it more than we do. Pushkin traced his African lineage to his great grandfather, who was born near the, sh the shores of uh, Lake Chad in Cameroon. Right. right. And the, another thing about the do, you don't hear much about Pushkin's uh, children, but Dumas comes from three generations. One, you have uh, Thomas Dumas, who apparently the uh, Count of Monte Cristo was based on and who became a general in the French army. And then Dumas, the writer who also wrote um, The Man in the Iron Mask. And then you have Dumas' son, who became a member of the French Academy of Science. This is remarkable, especially right, right. considering the times in which they lived. So I can never get enough Dumas and I can never get enough Pushkin. And I visited Russia, as I mentioned, on Pushkin's 200th anniversary. And in France, in Paris, I've been to Alexander Dumas, the writer's grave site. He's buried in the Pantheon and put oh, bouquets right. of flowers there. So I feel a strong connection with these brothers, as do you. Yes. Like I say, as I, as I was, as I'm studying them and just going back over the information and, and looking at them, and I'm just seeing the strong connections between these two brothers. Like, I imagine, just imagine these two brothers being able to, to hook up at one point yeah. and write yeah. together. Yeah. Like, the, the, the beauty they would have created, just the, like, they probably would have created two or three other sub forms of writings and just general forms of writing because they were just expressing themselves and creating new new ways of writing, new new ways of literature. Like, Pushkin wasn't trying to create uh, modern Russian literature. He was just expressing himself. Yeah, you know, he he wasn't he wasn't trying to create romanticism or romantic writings. He was trying to woo a lady. Now, what surprised me when I went to Russia, the most surprising thing, is that virtually no Russian or no Russian scholar I lectured there. Mm -hmm. None of them denied that Pushkin had an African ancestor. You would think based on our experience here in Babylon, USA, that racism would have been front and center and his African roots would have been uh, denied to, ex to an extent. That's the way it is in France about Duma. But po everybody recognizes that Pushkin had an African ancestor, but they don't see him as an African. They just see him as a Russian with an African ancestor. It was the first time in my life, and I'd already begun to travel a lot, where the one drop rule was challenged. And I began to see that other people, the other groups, other nations don't see race and, and ethnicity like we are taught to see it in the United States. Yeah, I, I know that here in these, YouTube, in these YouTube comments, a lot of times people, especially like some of the videos that you and I have done, people have come in and say, this person is not this, this person not that. That's not how we see it here. And I mean, okay, 
but that doesn't deny that person's African ancestry. And they embrace that African ancestry. Let's do my story. I know we're running down on time. This is a good story too. Uh -huh. I think that this is in Jay Rogers' uh, second volume of World's Great Men of Color. Dumas' daughter is getting married, and I guess she's getting married to a, a French fellow. And the uh, the the bridegroom's um, or the groom's family comes to the wedding, and they see all these black people. They call them Negroes, and they were a bit alarmed. And they come to Dumas and say, "Who are all these Negroes?" And apparently, Dumas had invited every black person in Paris. Every one of them got an invitation to let off. And Dumas says, "These are all members of my family. You'll have to get used to it." Now, I don't know if the wedding proceeded or not, but Dumas, we love him because he didn't run from who he was. Right. right. So not only are they brilliant, but they embrace their African heritage, and I love those brothers big time. Yes, yes, yes. You should never invite me to come on and talk about Duma and Pushkin because we'd be here all day, man. Look, I, I knew earlier today, I was like, we're going to nerd out on these subjects. Because <laughs> I was getting so excited as I was going back over my notes. I was Check like, this <laughs> out. As, as time went along, Pushkin's writings, I'm mean, not, not Pushkin, but Duma's writing became a little stale. And so he changed his writing style and he wrote, and at the end of his life, he wrote a cookbook. I have a copy of that. Right. And he said that he always said this was my best work. <laughs> Here's the story about Dumas. No, last Dumas story. I That's love right. it. Dumas is on his deathbed. He's dying. And according to the people around him, uh, he said, I see death coming towards me, but I am not afraid. I will tell her a story and she will be kind to me. I love it, man. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> be poetic on my deathbed. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So with the time we have left, let's transition so we can talk and talk about your upcoming webinars. And yeah. then we want to spend some time promoting our platforms as well. So uh, tell us about your upcoming webinars that you have. Doc. I have a webinar this Friday on the African image and art from Africa to Europe to the Americas. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's this Friday. I have another one Monday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, and it's, that's the 19th, and it's about the CDs of India. In the United States right now, he's come to Africa for his son's wedding, is a brother named Dr. Pashington Obing, and he has actually interacted with the CDs. The CDs are a group of Africans in India. Mm -hmm. He's talked with them, walked with them, and I'm going to have a conversation with him. It's going to be tough. Now, for people who are interested, the easiest thing to do, you have to register, is go to my website, www.drrenoco.com, www.drrenoco.com, and you can register. It's a Zoom presentation. And on that same website is information about my Patreon page. Now, what is this Patreon thing about? This is a way for people to give back. This is, this is a subscriber page. I have one. You have one. Yes. And the idea is we put all of this work into it. Everybody's not going to attend the website. Everybody, God forbid, is not going to watch on the shoulders of giants. But I think that people appreciate the work that we put into it. And so this is your opportunity to give back and to contribute. One of my mentors, a man named Ivan Van Sertema, used to say, Renoko, the worst feeling of all is to feel like I'm alone and we don't want to feel that way. We right, want right. to feel like we're all in this together, that everybody's not going to go to Russia. Everybody's not going to go to France. Everybody's not going to post. Everybody's not going to have a podcast or do a webinar. But everybody can contribute. And we need your support. Yes. Your, your turn, my brother. Yes. So I do want to say there's a link in the description. If you click the link in the description, you can register for Dr. Rashidi's webinars. I made it kind of easy to go to the link in the description. It'll take you to his website where you can register for the webinars. But echoing, echoing what Dr. Rashidi said, um, On the Shows of Giants was created to tell the stories of our sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora. I grew up, I grew up going to all black schools and learned a little bit about black history. So a lot of this that I know, it's what I learned in college and self-education, but we spend a lot of time researching. We spend a lot of time writing. We spend a lot of time working, collaborating, 
doing what we can to make sure we get our information out. We went from a point in time to thinking that I have no idea how to learn about myself to being in this digital time to where this information is literally at our fingertips. Dr. Rashidi is his information is accessible. It's very, very a lot more accessible now than it was 15, 20 years ago, especially like when YouTube first started. So I have a Patreon as well, patreon.com backslash OGSOG, where you can support, you can see all of my videos. You can go to my On the Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel, you youtube.com backslash on the shoulders one, subscribe, view the videos. I have over 300 videos of people of African descent. Pick a video, start, have some fun. Uh, support my website, www.ontheshoulders1.com or www.ontheshoulders.org. I have a free app. All the people who I profile on my website and my YouTube channel, I do a breakdown, question and answer on my app. That's a free app for Android. We make it easy. Like I, I love giving this information. Uh, I remember when I first started trying to contribute to society, I started in the motivational speaking realm but it didn't feel right. And then the more I started growing on the shows of giants and, and working with it and learning more, I felt like this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And this, and it's definitely an honor to be able to link with you, doctor, because well, I feel the same way about you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> because you represent another generation. One of the worst things is to feel, or we talked about being alone. Mm -hmm. but one of the worst things for me is the prospect of, my work not continuing when I'm gone. So I see that in you. We talked about Duma, we talked about Pushkin and their brilliance. I see a, a level of brilliance in yourself. And so I wanna support you. So while you say it's an honor to hang with me and have this conversation, I feel equally honored to be able to share with you and to talk about someone that I would like to see as a, a kind of a student. Yes. And yes. Assessor. Yes. Yes. And the belief that the blood of Pushkin and Dumas runs in me. And if the blood and Pushkin and Dumas runs in me, then it runs in you also. And we will in turn pass that down to future generations. That's our duty and our obligation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I appreciate that because that's that's where I see myself. When I first decided that this was my path, I'm, I'm looking up to Dr. Ben. I'm looking up to Dr. Clark. I'm looking up to you. I'm looking up to others and thinking in my head. I want to carry this. I want to be one of the ones who carry this torch on to the future. So I'm just doing my best to put my, my foot forward. And like I say, it is an, a pleasure to be able to link with you because I want to be able to carry that torch. And I know there's others with me and others out there who feel the same way. So we're just here to make sure that we do our part and what we can bring to the table, we're bringing it to the table. So, yeah. yes, sir. So um, uh, once again, wh when are your webinars going to be aired? The webinars are going to be Friday and Monday. That's Friday. the 16th and 19th of June. <clears throat> the one this Friday, the 16th, will be on the African Presence in Art. Original photographs. And one yes. of the things we haven't done is show pictures. The picture, I'm going to throw down. I have some photographs. And then on the 19th, we'll do the one on the, really, the African Presence in India with the focus on the group called the CDs with Brother Pashington Obing. All you have to do, go to the website, www.drrenoco.com and all the information will come up. Right. All right. I will be in attendance. So I know you will. I want, I want all of my listeners, all of my, all of my supporters, register. Come check this website out. All of the people who are upset because they don't want to teach critical race theory and all these other things. Hey, we, we shouldn't be expecting anybody else to teach us this information anyway. We have the information. It's being taught. You don't have to go anywhere else. It's for us, by us. Be a part of it. Be a part of the webinars. They are excellent webinars. I have so much fun at the webinars. I, I can personally vouch that it's going to be a great time and you are going to learn a lot. So with that being said, Dr. Rashida, you want to close us out with some final remarks? Up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. I think the comments that you made about us teaching us really, <clears throat> really is the point that we cannot expect anyone to tell our story but us. And if we don't tell our story, then we'll be the victims of that. There you go. 
Hey, can't say it any better. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. See you in the webinars, and then we'll see you next time. Thank you, my brother. No problem. Thank you.